There exists an immoral and unethical workaround that I've seen in homes and maybe even in a home like yours that makes a regular looking outlet like this appear to be totally safe and normal when in reality it's not grounded and not safe. Both of these outlets appear to be pretty normal. They're both duplex, which means they have two plugs and they have a hot, a neutral and a ground on each plug. So far so good. I can even plug an outlet tester into any of these and I get two bulbs lit, which if you look at the key here, that shows that this is correctly wired. And that's the same on all four of these plugs on these two outlets here. They all appear to be identical, when in reality there's a whole lot more going on behind the scenes that this will not reveal. If I cut the power to this, however, and then remove the faceplate, we'll be able to see exactly what's wrong inside this outlet. As we look inside here, what you might see conspicuously missing is a third wire. Here we have our black or hot wire, we have the white or neutral, what's missing is the ground. There is no ground coming into this receptacle at all. You saw just a second ago, however, that the outlet tester or receptacle tester showed everything was wired correctly, so how could that be? That's because someone chose to use pretty shady technique here, it's a hack, and they've connected a jumper from the neutral wire to the ground wire, and this is called a bootleg ground. It's actually designed specifically to fool those outlet testers. In fact, I have three different outlet testers that I've run on this specific outlet, and every one of them shows in no uncertain terms that this is wired correctly. So that brings up several questions. Number one, why doesn't the outlet detector detect this? Why is it showing that this is totally fine? Number two, why would someone do this? What's the point? Number three, what's the danger? Like maybe I can just leave it like this and it's not a big deal. And number four, if I have something like this going on, what can I do about it? As for why these don't detect it, it's because these are cheap. These are usually 10 or 12, maybe this one here with the screen on it was maybe even $25 for a tester, and they do a great job for almost every single situation, but you can't account for everything, especially some shady type of behavior that some people are doing, like the bootleg ground. Now, you can purchase a tester that's a specific circuit tester meant to handle this, but the problem is these cost about $300 to $400 or more just to get the results for what is hopefully a less than common situation. As for why someone would do this, there's a couple of main reasons. Let's say you live in a house and you do not have grounds in your outlets, meaning you have two prong outlets. They don't have the ground, that third hole in them. And we know that for a lot of the appliances and power strips and things that we wanna use, you need that three prong outlet. So instead of actually doing it right and fixing the issue, you could actually just fake it like this and that will give you the appearance of having a grounded outlet or outlets throughout your home. There's a lot of big issues with this and there's a reason this is not only illegal but completely against code and completely unsafe. But the National Electric Code or NEC really clearly states that this is under no circumstances allowed. You cannot use a bootleg ground like this. But if you wanna sell the house and you want it to make it look more modern or more appealing, that's a reason somebody may have done something like this. We'll often find that the same person who did a poor job and did something unethical like this also didn't know enough about electricity to put the hot on the hot and the neutral on the neutral. So they've swapped those, creating what's called a reverse polarity bootleg ground, which is a whole nother story that we'll cover in just a minute here. The reason we wanna make sure that there's a ground and the ground is functioning inside our outlets or receptacles is because that's there to protect us as humans we will basically replace the ground if a ground isn't there. Meaning that if there's any sort of fault or interruption in the circuit, then our bodies can actually act as the ground and not in a good way. This could mean that the full 15 or 20 amps from the receptacle and 120 or more volts would actually run through our bodies and connect down through our feet to the ground or our hands to something else, causing us to have not only some potential risk of shock, but even electrocution or death. This is no joking matter, this is a pretty serious issue when you see something dangerous like this. What's worse is this situation that I mentioned a moment ago about the reverse polarity bootleg ground, which is what I've set up right here. I've got my hot wire, the black one, connected to the neutral or silver side, and on the other side here, I've got my neutral connected to my hot or brass side. That means that the wires are switched, I've got things going in the wrong direction, but because when you add that to the bootleg ground, now I've got my hot wire or my hot current connected to the neutral at all times, which means it's sending that out to everything and whatever is attached to this outlet. 
This is a super dangerous situation. This means there is a low impedance live voltage on all grounded parts of anything you plug into that outlet which greatly increases the likelihood of shock or electrocution. Now fortunately this is a much less common situation but it is a far more dangerous one. Definitely take the time to examine what's going on there. If you're not sure then make sure to turn off the circuit breaker for that and call an electrician to make sure you can get this bootleg issue fixed because that could be very lethal. There are a few telltale signs that will help you to know if it's worth taking a look at your house to see if maybe you've got a bootleg ground. Now first of all, this is most common in homes that were built at the time when ground wires and ground circuits weren't as common. And this is a pretty wide range. This could be the 40s, 50s, 60s, or 70s. Anywhere in there, and potentially even a little earlier or later, but those are going to be the most common decades where you'll see this sort of thing happening. Also, you can tell if you've got some two-prong outlets in certain parts of your home, but not in others. That's a good indicator that the house was built without a ground circuit and that maybe some upgrades or changes were made and maybe they were done properly and maybe they weren't. If you think you may have a bootleg ground in your house, there's a few ways to check. Obviously the first one is to buy an expensive tester like this ideal circuit tester here, but at $421 at least at the time of this filming, that's quite a bit of money to pay. Really the easier option, even though it's more work, is just to do what we've done here and pop off the plate, take a look behind there and see. Obviously make sure to turn off your power at your circuit breaker box before doing any of this sort of inspection. If you see any wire of any sort going from these silver or neutral screws down to your ground, that's a bootleg ground and that's dangerous. This is also a great time to check for that reverse polarity that we referred to earlier because again, that's a whole nother level of danger to watch out for. Fortunately, there are several ways to handle this if you do find yourself in a situation where you've got a three prong plug like this, but only two wires going into it and no ground. Your first option and the easiest one really is just to replace this with a two prong outlet. According to code, you are able to replace a two prong outlet with another two prong outlet if that's how it was wired originally. That way you don't have to go through the expense of rewiring and everything, but you can actually just put that two prong in there. It makes it very clear that there is no ground on that. A second option is to install a GFCI or ground fault circuit interrupter instead and mark it with the included no equipment ground label. You'll usually find that label in every single GFCI. You can even run other three prong outlets downstream of this one, so long as they're also marked as no equipment ground. The reason a GFCI outlet like this works so well is because it actually is measuring the current coming into it and going out of it. And if there's any discrepancy in what's going out to what's coming in, it's gonna shut it down. It's gonna do that to protect us and make sure that we're safe if something were to happen as far as a fault or some sort of interruption in the line. The best part, it's gonna handle all of that computation in just milliseconds, thousandth of a second, so quickly that we likely wouldn't be affected at all, or if we were, it would be minimalized because of how quickly it would shut that power off. The third option is really the best option, but it's also the most costly and most invasive, and that is to run new wiring throughout your home and have ground wiring put in. Typically, this is gonna cost at least about eight to $10,000 to have an electrician come out and do that, oftentimes more, and again, there's a million factors that go into that, so it really just depends on your house and your wiring and how complex the job is. So hopefully, armed with this information, you can make sure that you and your loved ones at home are safe and secure, and then you have some options for what to do if you do detect a bootleg ground in your home. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.